Namaste beautiful yoga I get asked about breathing often and although there is quite a bit of information on breathing out there most people still can't breathe properly and truth be told when when we're stressed out we contract the body and obviously breathing suffers so we all are subject to stress in our life it can happen to all of us one thing is to do yoga about once or twice a week and interval training twice to three times a week that's almost optimal to me you can do a little more than that but that is optimal and then exercises that are less interval training like a full body weight or body weight full body workout stuff like this for the other days some hot or something light or some dancey um, groovy class and that covers you throughout the entire week now how can we breathe first of all yeah we have to work on calming the mind that usually takes conscious effort because we live i feel like never before in human history in a really sped up society sped up information someone uh, was saying how much information where how much data we are downloading each and every day this is we're bombarded with information and we're lost basically in a sea of information where we become disinformed <laughs> it's the opposite effect because it's a too much of a good thing so we have to pause through the day which can happen through walking through yoga through exercise through playing with your child i find that right now for me to be the best just playing with a, th a toddler being a toddler in the world of a toddler to me it's like nothing else like i don't want any meditation give me that so find something gardening gardening would be the same you interacting with plants with nature barefoot walking Med formal meditation that's not my choice i like visualization and such but i don't like formal meditation it's not my thing and it's probably not gonna be my thing for a while tai chi etc finding ways to slow down to disconnect we're always so interconnected that we're becoming disconnected that's the first thing in breathing you have to pay attention to your thoughts in my classes i have a lot of classes that are based on positive thinking not that negative thoughts are a bad thing if you for example feel anger towards someone you should you should allow yourself that feeling because your body is telling you something but if you have a on repeat negative dialogue or monologue in your head that then that i would consider negative it's a pattern it's a pattern it doesn't get resolved it's kind of a theme in your type of thinking then that's what i consider quote unquote negative not not negative emotions crying and grief and sadness and anger and no, those are not negative emotions they're just emotions the way joy and <sighs> happiness and all of those can be so <sighs> i hope you understand what i mean all right once the thoughts once we're balancing out our thoughts and our thoughts are in, are in our control that's the main thing i want to convey that we choose our thoughts we the soul should be the master of the mind not the other way around the, the mind shouldn't be ruling our life we should have an external observer outer witness witness from outside we're witnessing ourselves from outside that gives us the perspective of how small certain worries are not all worries but most of the things we worry about they're nothing they're small and also understanding the impermanence of life, the impermanence of each situation, that gives us freedom to be relaxed and to accept the flow of life. Once we have learned a behavior of waking up and having a positive thought, gratefulness thought, doing a class, I have classes with intention of gratitude, of self-love, of looking at yourself with love, appreciating your, like say your elbows, or thinking your liver or something like that that already lifts your vibrations up opens your chest once we're focusing on love we kind of feel lighter the armor here dissolves a little bit and we can breathe properly yoga also uh, targets the opening of the chest and shoulders 
so that can help with breathing we don't want to be sitting constantly collapsing here and not allowing the expansion of the lungs and the diaphragm once we've covered that i know it's a lot but breathing is a complex thing we have to also pay attention to our, our pelvic floor because leakage of energy can happen there and we have to learn to for at least 20 times a day to contract mola banda usually i remind you during classes but you can do it during the day or make it a make it a, a ritual while washing dishes or something that is a constant reminder like when you're drinking water or something that you do every day driving so once we are strong in the pelvic area that's the foundation for the body and for the breath and for the organs then tva contractions if you don't know how to contract your transverse abdominis go to my postpartum classes especially number eight find my number eight postpartum series that class will help you to to connect to your tva deep abdominal muscles and that is not the six pack Sometimes when you're contracting your um, core, if, if it's not just the TVA, you're actually uh, constricting your breath. So there is only one way to um, contract that core and at the same time deepen the breath, and that's TVA breathing. So we learned that during pregnancy uh, and postpartum, but we should apply it at any time. In, during uh, yoga classes. What I mean is I have enough classes, but maybe let me show you. What I mean is relaxed belly, engaged mola banda. It already engages this part of my core all the way up to here, just the mola banda itself. Once I engage mola banda, I can engage the TVA slightly so i'm not flattening the belly i'm just i'm just pulling the belly button up and pulling these muscles in that is all i'm doing and that is the way to breathe now you want unobstructed breath which i do love ujjayi breath because you constrict a little bit the back of the throat so that your breath becomes slow and you slow down the rate of breathing which actually improves your longevity because you're uptaking less oxygen but you're breathing deeply because oxygen oxygenates us it's a double-edged sword we do need it but if we do too much of um, shallow quick breathing we oxygenate the body faster so our lifespan shortens so we want to slow down the breath tva contraction expansion of the diaphragm if you put your hands <laughs> Here on the rib cage, here where your rib cage is, you will breathe into your hands and they will widen out and they will come back in and they will widen out and they will come back in and you will slow that down, slow that process down. I will have more breathing exercises and breathing classes. There is many, many variations of pranayama, but this is your basic breath. Ujjayi is the sound of the ocean. It's from here. And it goes into your diaphragm. Hands come together. And you don't try to hold your belly in. You allow it. The contraction of Mula Banda keeps it tight. It doesn't have to be <laughs> inwards. It, it can expand when you breathe so that is it thanks for joining me today post your questions below post your requests below for more classes come to my membership i have hundreds of classes there and ongoing i'm uploading every week sometimes many times a week <laughs> and we're doing now booty series so come on over i'd love to see you there and otherwise i'll see you here i'll be here more and more and thanks for joining me today. Thanks for your support. Love you guys. Have a beautiful day.